There is a very harsh truth about the Abbotsford real estate market. If you're selling a tenanted property, there's a very good chance that you're losing a significant amount of money by selling it tenanted. This isn't speculation, this is a reality that's happening right now. So why are sellers losing money by selling a tenanted property? Let's break down those core issues in today's video. Let me rephrase that. What type of active property are sellers currently losing money on? The answer is tenanted properties. Just a couple of months ago, the BC NDP introduced new legislation that gave tenants more rights and stripped landlords of their rights. I'm not going to review those rules today, but you can click the video above where I review the different rule changes to the Residential Tenancy Act. Essentially, what happened with these new rules introduced by the socialist BCNDP took rights away from landlords and gave more rights to the tenant. As an end result, tenants are fed up and they're selling their tenanted properties. So let's take a quick look at the tenanted properties listed here in Abbotsford. Right now, there are 16 one-bedroom, one-bath condos listed. That's 16 out of 46 listings. There are 21 out of 155 two-bed, two-bath condos that are listed. That's about 14%. 13 of the current townhomes listed are tenanted. The biggest market we notice the most tenanted properties listed is in the detached market. At the recording of this video, there are currently 93 homes listed for sale that are tenanted. That's 93 listings. That's a total from 487 listings, making it 19% listed that are currently tenanted. So you might be asking yourself, Okay, Gary, we get the numbers, but why aren't tenanted properties selling right now? And let's break that down, a few simple reasons. The first is the new tenancy laws. Buyers, when they're looking to buy their first home, whether it's a one bed condo or a two bedroom condo, or buyers are looking to upgrade to a townhouse or a detached home, they wanna buy a property that they can move into right away. They don't wanna be waiting three to four months for getting keys to their new home. There's also a very real fear of what happens if the tenant doesn't move out on, on possession day. The second thing is, it's difficult to get showings. Usually when you're looking at homes that are tenanted here in my home market here in the Abbotsford and the Fraser Valley, the realtor usually has to give a 24 hour notice to the tenant. It's not only that folks, but in a lot of cases, tenanted properties don't show well. That's the truth. So there's two factors working against the landlord right away. Usually when I have listings for condos, townhomes or detached homes, sometimes we get semen as showings, or even last minute showings. And what happens is if you don't get the buyer in that day that might be a serious buyer, there's a very good chance that you might be losing a potential buyer for your home. Not only that folks, but first impression is the best impression. And sometimes when buyers walk into a home that might be tenanted where it doesn't look well, it's not staged, or there's a strong smell in the home, there's a very good chance the buyer isn't going to be able to look beyond that and they're going to leave and tell the realtor they don't wanna see any more homes like that. Number three, buyers have a preference of buying homes that are owner-occupied or vacant for the following reasons. Owner-occupied homes show well, and if they do get an accepted offer, there's a very good chance that they might be able to get keys for their home within one to two months of subject removal. The last thing is, with these new tenancy laws, investors are leaving the BC real estate market. They're investing their money into commercial real estate, looking at opening businesses, or putting their money to work through the stock market, or in other real estate markets across Canada and the United States. So let's talk about the market impact. We already reviewed the numbers earlier for the total number of listings climbing. Here's the thing folks, landlords are pricing their homes really well where they're even listing at 40, 80, sometimes 90,000 below market value just to get their homes sold, but it's still not working. So the impact that we're seeing right now is the number of listings is compiling for all three property types. In a nutshell, what's going to happen is first time home buyers or people looking to upgrade, it's going to cause an increase on the demand side of homes that are owner occupied or vacant and the supply is going to continue to shrink. As a result, we're going to start seeing multiple offers and a potential increase in home prices for these homes. So that impacts not only buyer affordability for those people that are looking to buy, but also those folks that are looking to rent a unit or a home. So here are a couple of things that you can do as a landlord. The first thing is consider cash for keys. What this is essentially is a mutual agreement to end tenancy form that you can bring up with your tenant and it's essentially what it is you propose it to them, they can either say yes, and if they agree, they sign off on it, they agree to move out in a specified time period. That could be in 30 days or 60 days. This is an idea that I love using for my clients that own investment properties. And here's the reason 
reason why, folks, if you have a home that's tenant occupied, a lot of times the main reason why sellers don't want to list it a vacant home is the fear of losing out on rental income. That's a valid factor. But here's the thing. By selling a tenanted property, you're either leaving forty to $60,000 on the table that I could get you back through listing a home that is vacant. So the way that you do that is usually you can offer them some compensation. Usually when a tenant is moving out because a buyer has agreed to move in, you owe the tenant one month's rent. So in some cases, you could offer a tenant two or three months of rent to see if that would be enough for them to move out. If not, then you go on to the second option, which is move. And if the tenant doesn't agree in that scenario, you can consider a scenario two where you wait to list your home until the tenant moves out. In that scenario, you can do any minor touch-ups or paint the unit if needed, and we can sell your home then. Number three is evaluate your investment goals. If you are an investor that's invested for the long term and you're not looking to retire anytime soon, my recommendation would be just hold on to your property. And here's the reason why. As more and more landlords exit the market, the pool of rental housing is going to shrink. But as a landlord, your prices for your rent are going to continue to go up. I not only sell real estate, but I am also an investor. So I understand when you're investing in real estate, it's a long term game. So for a couple of listings that I've had earlier this year, or listings that I have coming up, there's been a couple of conversations that I've been having with my investor clients. If the units are tenanted out, we've been talking and working with the tenants to see if we can get the property vacated. And the second thing is, if the property is tenanted and it's on a fixed one year lease, we're going to wait until the tenant moves out so we can list the home when the property is vacant and get the most money for my clients. Another story is I was talking to a client earlier this summer where they own multiple units here in Abbotsford. They're getting to the point where they might be looking to downsize and cash out in a couple of years. And they asked, Gary, what's the impact of the current tenancy loss going to have on real estate in the long term? The thing is, folks, no one knows. But one thing that I can tell you is real estate has always gone up in price over the long term with the BC NDP and our federal government. They're not addressing the core issue right now, which is the lack of housing. So what we're going to see is a continued demand for housing on the purchase side and on the rental side. The last thing is rely on market data. Right now, we've had four rate cuts. In order to feel the impact of those rate cuts, we need to give the market some time. So that could mean we need to give the market at least six to 12 months to feel the impact of the rate cuts. And as rates go lower, maybe we'll see the number of investors coming back to the real estate market if they see a good buying opportunity. The bottom line is selling a tenanted property is not worth it if you're a landlord and a seller. The reasons why are you're not going to get enough exposure. And the last thing is you're not going to get the money that you deserve and need for a successful sale. So if you're okay with leaving money on the table, maybe selling a tenanted property works for you. If you're someone like me that likes to get maximum ROI on their investment, maybe it's time to consider different ways that you can move forward. If you have any questions about how you can move forward with selling a tenanted property, click the link below to book a meeting. I would also love your valuable feedback on your thoughts about selling a tenanted property and also the new tenancy laws that have come into place. If you find this video valuable, please go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe button so we can keep spreading the word to more investors like you. I'm I'm Gary Densa and I'll see you next week.